Senator from Louisiana. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I rise again today in strong support of the Stop Sanctuary Policies and Protect Americans Act. We'll be voting on that later today. I was here on the floor yesterday laying out the strong case in support of that, talking to many, many colleagues before this vote today as I have been for the past several days. And today I rise to focus on some arguments from the other side that are erroneous and misleading, quite frankly, to debunk those so that everyone has the full, the true, the clear picture of why this legislation is so needed. Mr. President, first, I've heard a few of my colleagues talk about the need for federal and local authorities to do a better job of working together. For instance, Senator Durbin, who just left the floor, said, quote, Federal and local authorities must do a better job of communicating and coordinating so that undocumented immigrants with serious criminal records are detained and deported, period. Close quote. Similarly, Senator Feinstein said, quote, it is very clear to me that we have to improve cooperation between local, state, and federal law enforcement, close quote. Well, Mr. President, let me say that I completely agree with them. And they are laying out a strong case for this legislation, not against it. Because we need to do something about the cause of the non-cooperation, the obstacle between that full cooperation that absolutely needs to happen every day. Simply wishing for a better outcome isn't going to make it happen. The fact of the matter is there are dozens and dozens of sanctuary cities, jurisdictions that have those policies that were cooperating in the past, that want to cooperate, but they have been faced with lawsuits from the ACLU and others, court decisions that local law enforcement officials could be held liable for violating an individual's constitutional rights simply for honoring a detainer request from ICE. Now that's ridiculous. That's an abusive threat. And our legislation on the floor today is going to remove that threat. The Stop Sanctuary Policies and Protect Americans Act allows for that cooperation between local and federal authorities to resume again because Section 4 of the bill will facilitate state and local compliance with the ICE detainer and remove that onerous and unreasonable threat. Cooperation has been stifled by lawsuits aimed at bullying local law enforcement. And this bill will grant local law enforcement the authority to clearly comply with ICE detainers without threat of liability. It'll protect them from that liability for simply complying with ICE detainers. And I'll remind my colleagues, that will do nothing to infringe on an individual's civil or constitutional rights. They still have the same ability to pursue those against ICE, anyone else they choose. That's why this legislation is supported by people who know something about what needs to happen for local and federal authorities to cooperate. Who am I talking about? The Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association. They know what they're talking about. The International Union of Police Associations. They live it every day. The National Association of Police Organizations and the National Sheriff's Association. Don't you think they know what's needed on the ground? They do. And because they do, they strongly support this legislation. Now, second, Mr. President, some argument, some colleagues on the other side argue that this bill won't do anything. Instead, we need so-called comprehensive immigration reform like the Gang of Eight bill. But Mr. President, the Gang of Eight bill that my colleagues are pushing, 1,200 pages long when it passed the Senate, it didn't do anything to resolve this issue of sanctuary cities. It didn't do anything to change the abusive lawsuits I'm talking about. It didn't do anything to encourage federal and local authorities to cooperate in real time. Absolutely nothing. And that's just the fact of the matter once you read the 1,200 pages. 
All the Gang of Eight bill does is lead with a big amnesty, an amnesty overnight to about 11 million illegal immigrants in our country today. So that comprehensive immigration reform bill, Gang of Eight bill, whatever you want to call it, does nothing in this area that is so crucial to fix, does nothing about sanctuary cities, does nothing to remove these abusive lawsuits as obstacles to the clear and full cooperation between federal, state, and local authorities that even folks on the other side of the bill admit needs to happen and is a problem right now. Mr. President, there are lots of these myths about our bill versus the facts. And so with that in mind, Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to submit for the record a myth versus fact sheet that lays out clearly the myths, the arguments made against this legislation and the real facts of the Stop Sanctuaries Policies Act, S-2146. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me highlight the two biggest ones. And the first one is that our legislation uh, would somehow uh, punish and make it more difficult for illegal persons to report crimes and cooperate with local law enforcement. That is a pure myth. And what's the fact of the matter? Well, read the bill, as the American people suggest. Read the bill. Our bill, S-2146, specifically provides that if a jurisdiction has a policy that local law enforcement will not inquire about the immigration status of crime victims or witnesses, that jurisdiction will not be deemed as a sanctuary jurisdiction. It will not lose federal funds over that. So that argument is simply a myth. The second argument often made is that somehow this legislation is requiring local law enforcement to carry out federal immigration responsibilities. Again, a pure myth, a purely erroneous argument that if you read the bill as 2146, you'll see is simply not true. The bill does not require local law enforcement, quote, to carry out federal immigration responsibilities, close quote, in any way, shape, or form. Removing illegal immigrants remains the exclusive province of the federal government. The bill simply withholds certain federal funds from jurisdictions that prohibit exactly the cooperation that our opponents on the other side say is so necessary, and correctly say is so necessary. So that, again, is the fact of the matter versus the myth that's being propagated. Again, we have several myths versus facts as part of the record. And I urge everyone, starting with our colleagues, Democrats and Republicans, to study that carefully. Mr. President, this is an important issue. Sanctuary cities are a real problem. And we need to fix that problem to move forward. And so I urge my colleagues to look carefully at this issue. What's driving these sanctuary cities policies? Our legislation will take up those drivers, those obstacles, will solve those problems, will result in the cooperation at all levels of law enforcement that we desperately need. So I urge my colleagues to vote yes later today so we can push forward with this important and critical legislation. And Mr. President, I would suggest the absence of a quorum.